morning, good day, good afternoon. Welcome back everyone to the GVU, the GEOS video update. Uh, we're continuing in our series of In Conversation With, and today we're joined by a special guest. As usual, I'm Curtis Edwards. Joined with me is my co-host, Ben Mayer, and today we have a special guest. Vish, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Tell us what you do for Dell and how long you've been around. Absolutely. Been with Dell a little close to 20 years, almost 80 quarters clocking in. Uh, my name is wow. Ashton Balakrishnan, part of the multi-cloud product management team at Dell. And it's been an exciting uh, times in terms of the work, what we have been doing. So really excited to connect with you folks and uh, have a conversation today. Awesome. 20 years. That's, that's, a, that's a good history. I mean, the entire nonstop or did you leave and come back or, you know? Uh, it's a 20 years on the on trot. Uh, January, it'll be 20. Awesome. Awesome. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, um, I'm in my 19th year, so I'm not, I'm not far behind you. So all good. So we wanted to, to just have a, a, a general conversation, just some back and forth, get your opinion on a, a couple of different things, you know, back in May uh, at DTW Dell tech world of this year, we expanded or talked about our cloud to ground strategy, right? So in the pillar of apex, we had, uh, ground to cloud, and we also had cloud to ground as well as our Apex offers. And our cloud to ground is basically bringing the cloud operational model uh, that our customers seem to greatly enjoy, right? Bringing that automation, not having to worry about the their infrastructure, super fast deployment, et cetera, bringing that, all that down on premise, right? And we took that and we're partnering with various other vendors in the industry big giants in the industry to deliver that experience, basically a similar experience to what we've grown to love and our customers have grown to love with VxRail and VMware, right? So the, the three solutions that we talked about or we announced at DTW was Apex Cloud Platform for Microsoft Azure, Apex Cloud Platform for um, Red Hat OpenShift and Apex Cloud Platform for VMware. Now, I'm... Um, Happy to announce that, you know, as of a couple of days ago, the Apex Cloud Platform for Microsoft Azure is now generally available. Customers can go ahead and start to order and consume, et cetera. So can you give us a little bit, give our audience a little bit of your take on what this means and how it affects our customers and our existing solutions in that space? Absolutely. I think uh, it's a beautiful time where customers, if you look at, post uh, era of COVID where everybody wants to have something deployed on the edge, deployed uh, in their remote office, branch office or data center locations. And they want an infrastructure which they can really leverage towards getting the power of cloud. And that's where with the history, what we have been having in building converged systems and hyper-converged infrastructure, we have been working with Microsoft for many years. And in fact, I still remember almost 10 years back, we did uh, start the journey with cloud from an Azure perspective, introducing Dell hybrid cloud uh, uh, system and cloud platform system in the past, uh, right? So we have had a lot of experience in this and also uh, taking our innovative VxRail IP, which has been the flagship uh, one in terms of customers going and doing the deployment and how we can really take that management and operations IP and bring it to the Azure world as something what we are doing. And we are doing this mainly to go and address customers' uh, needs in terms of what they're really trying to do, both from a hybrid cloud and a multi-cloud. And if you look at it, it has some barriers in terms of innovating with multi-cloud, be it in terms of uh, management complexity or in terms of limited visibility, right? And also when customers are leveraging their cloud to on-prem, uh, and also in any of the needs that can be unpredictable uh, cloud costs, uh, right? And also in terms of where it could be uh, some sort of an inconsistency and skill gap that they would be really kind of bothered on. So for Dell Technologies, we really want to create the infrastructure solutions based off where customers are really going and deploying their workloads. And we want to ensure that they get a consistent management operations, which they can really use it to, uh, bring time to value to whatever they are doing, starting from initial deployment to the ongoing operations and including the capability in terms of what we bring on to like uh, integrated support. So that when something goes wrong, they don't need to even go and pick up the phone. Uh, like our solution automatically goes and creates that uh, 
uh, tickets that is uh, needed and uh, issues get auto resolved. So that's the capability. And we want to kind of do this with the familiar interfaces that our customers are using, be it in terms of Windows Admin Center or uh, from a hybrid uh, management for any infrastructure using Azure Arc and Azure Portal. How we can really simplify the transformation journey is what we are really focused on. Awesome. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, which you mentioned earlier, the, the collaboration we had with Microsoft for, for a long time. Um, could you maybe expand a bit how it's changed now? And obviously now we had uh, an offering with, with um, Azure Stack, but now we transformed this um, this journey with, with Microsoft and we're even working closely, even more closely with them on the new offering. Could you maybe expand on this a bit? Absolutely. Uh, I think you hit upon an imp important point for our customers because uh, now they can get much more value towards how they're doing. And we're really uh, shrinking the time to value in terms of how they can do it. And that is actually happening between the co-engineering and the collaboration, which is taken to the next level between Microsoft and Dell Technologies, wherein customers can get significant benefits in terms of going and uh, deploying the solutions initially. Our case in point is, if, uh, when customers are looking at doing lifecycle management, and if you look at it historically, change management is something is complex and re requires downtime. What we are really simplifying is when updates are available from Microsoft, how can we really make it available immediately? Uh, this solution is going to bring in when there are any patches or uh, updates coming in from a monthly or uh, like uh, any uh, security patches and uh, things like that coming from Microsoft. Uh, customers get the advantage in terms of how it shows up in our uh, cloud platform uh, foundation software, the integration with Windows Admin Center in less than four hours. And in, in my opinion, it's a huge benefit because customers no longer need to wait for the updates to be made available. And we don't need to qualify it additionally because between the collaboration of uh, Dell Technologies and Microsoft, we kind of do this continuous integration, continuous dollop and CI CD pipeline. So uh, both the companies kind of test each other's code to ensure that integrity is there. And uh, if you look at uh, VxRail uh, uh, and what we are bringing onto the Azure world as well, the continuous validated state is something we give that assurance to the customer in terms of a known good state. And that's where when customers can wait, uh, they can actually take the baseline update, which would combine both Dell and Microsoft. But for customers that are really wanting to go and take advantage of saying, hey, I have a, a like a bug fix or a security patch coming in from Microsoft, they will be able to go and adopt that immediately. Obviously, it's customer's choice, right? We right. give that option in terms of what they can really uh, take advantage of and the control and the flexibility that customers are really looking for. So I just want to make sure everybody heard you. You said within four hours, one, two, yep. three, four hours. Boom. Yes. That's yep. pretty within four impressive. hours. That's pretty impressive for sure. So we're, we're 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 being able to achieve that because Microsoft also has our equipment. Is that is that exactly. kind of why? So they're testing against correct. So as part of the continuous integration, continuous development, both the companies have each other. Uh, company's hardware and the software, and we ensure that it's integrated within the pipeline so that uh, the validation continuously goes. And uh, we are able to bring that advantage directly translated to our customers. That's pretty impressive for sure. Now, in this space, in this Microsoft space, we already have solutions in the Dell portfolio for Azure Stack ATI. So how, how are we playing together here? Is this is this replacing? Is this a next evolution? Sit next to, side by side? What's your thoughts? Uh, that's great. So uh, good question. Uh, if you look at it, uh, we are building the Apex Cloud platform for Microsoft Azure with our next generation uh, PowerEdge servers, 16 generation in this case. And uh, we are making it as a turnkey solution with key innovation coming in from hardware, part of our multi-cloud strategy, and you talked about the three portfolio offers. This will be kind of a common hardware where customers can start leveraging. So that's one of the benefits from an infrastructure perspective. And uh, this will go on with the MC nodes. And from a software innovation is where uh, it's going to be uh, significant in terms of what our customers are uh, going to get as advantage. 
uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, starting from the initial deployment towards the ongoing operations and everything, and in, including the capability in terms of where uh, the updates are seamless and we are also able to, for example, redeployment, re-imaging. We have solutions covering each of those. And for customers that are looking to go and deploy uh, in a, like tens and thousands or uh, of those uh, nodes clusters, they'll be able to take advantage in, a, in our future release where they can also further automate it, be it in terms of our uh, config portal and other stuff that's they're going to come in. But, but if you look at it, the benefit itself would be where uh, the 16th generation brings in new turnkey features. So our current in-market solution mm. okay. uh, is based on 15 generation servers. And that is something we do have a good amount of integration. So customers that are looking to kind of expand their clusters, they will be able to continue with the 15th generation. And for customers that are looking to deploy and adopt next generation technology, uh, I, I would say go with the Apex Plot platform for Azure. And the good news is you can actually coexist and use it with their familiar Windows Admin Center. So customers can have those solutions uh, together. However, to question in terms of uh, what, what is it for our existing customers versus the, this new solution coming in, uh, I would recommend that customers uh, that are on our 15 generation for homogeneity purposes, they, uh, if they're looking for expansion scenarios, go with the 15 generation. But if there is new deployments, definitely the Apex Plot platform for Azure based on 16 generation is the solution that I would uh, really recommend because it kind of sets a standard for their multi-cloud uh, computing needs and brings in the best capability what they can go and leverage for their hybrid cloud computing as well. Awesome. Okay, thanks for expanding on this wish. Um, Curtis mentioned at the beginning of the call that the ACP for Microsoft Azure is part of our cloud to ground strategy. And it, it makes it easier for customers to run workloads similar in the cloud as they can now do on premises. Um, what are the, the kind of hybrid aspects that customers can utilize? Um, maybe the integration to the Azure portal or as well Azure Arc would be an option to maybe extend uh, Kubernetes workloads. Could you maybe expand on this topic just a bit? Absolutely. So uh, look at the way in terms of uh, why would a customer need this hybrid infrastructure? The need of the hybrid infrastructure is obviously to go and leverage the capabilities from Azure, in this case, to go and run, uh, modernize their workload, be it in terms of virtualized or container workloads, right? They will be able to go and do that. But the most important aspect is customers are really looking forward to go and leverage the power of Azure and how they can bring it to on-prem. Uh, leveraging the app service, application services, data services, or platform services, where they would be wanting to go and run on premise. And from our side, we will be continuing to go and innovate uh, in terms of from a management and governance perspective, uh, helping customers across their IT estate, uh, across the globe, they will be able to go and use it in a way where they can uh, do like things, uh, monitoring at scale, updates at scale, or in terms of getting uh, further insights, or uh, ensure that the compliance and governance from a security perspective is kind of taken care of leveraging uh, either our Windows Admin Center or extension, or in the future where we will be going and integrating with uh, Microsoft Se Security Defender for cloud, for example, right? So those are the benefits where customers are taken care of in bringing all of the Azure services running on-prem and uh, ensuring that end to end, they are able to go and leverage it for their business needs, right? Be it in terms of uh, hardware level management or be it in terms of OS application and the business services, what Azure provides, they'll be able to go and leverage that and run on-prem, essentially making this as the hybrid cloud infrastructure. I kind of uh, call it as graduated from the the historical hyper-converged infrastructure towards making it as a hybrid cloud infrastructure uh, in ensuring that customers' needs are really bridged for their uh, transformation journey because they are really accelerating what they want to do and newer deployments are coming. That those deployments are mostly on the edge uh, in terms of how the, these are, where the data is getting created, they need an infrastructure that can really support and bring that Azure Power running on from us. 
that's that's amazing. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend a couple minutes talking to us and talking to our viewers. You know, as as usual for everybody watching, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified when we update new videos. Um, are there any other questions, Ben, for Vish? Oh, I think that's it. Uh, thanks a lot. This was really insightful. Yeah. Thank you, no, man. Thank you for very me. much for, for being here. Thanks for having me. It was, it's a great conversation uh, on a, a morning uh, of my time and the time well spent uh, talking to both of you, Curtis and Ben. Really appreciate you uh, taking time and hosting me today. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us. And for our viewers, see you guys next time. Cheers.